make sure we have it. But we're going to go to Hebrews 13. And what we're going to do, what's fascinating, is he took me to Hebrews 13, 1 through 3, and then he took me to Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, and then Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. And I thought that was fascinating. Because rarely does he do that in a sequence like that. He'll throw it in the Old and New Testament, but he specifically said, share these. And I said, fine, Lord, I'll do that. Because again, we have to remember why we're here. We're not just here only to learn the Word of God. Yes, I've said it tons of times. He commands us to grow in grace and the knowledge of Him. But most importantly, look at Hebrews 13.1. Let love of the brethren continue. Now let me ask you a question. When the Holy Spirit inspired Hebrews to be written, was continue only for that time, or was it to continue to continue until his return? To continue to continue. Let love of the brethren continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For by this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember, the prisoners, as though in prison with them, and those who are ill-treated, since you yourselves also are in the body. What you did yesterday, and how you, those that served here for our yard sale, just loved on the people. We didn't judge them. We didn't preach to them. If anything we're guilty of is not preaching to people when they come here. And that's not a coincidence. Because every church they go to, what happens? They get preached to. We're completely different. We just love them. Because again, that's what our job is to love them, not judge them. And he says to continue. Remember the prisoners as though in prison with them. Now, I guess you could apply it to actual prisoners or maybe those that are in bondage. You remember when you were in bondage? Now, because you know the truth, you're free. Well, put yourself in their shoes. Be compassionate to their responses and what they say. Continue doing what you're doing because it's working. When people come here, whether it's for the yard sale or whatever the reason is, we want them to leave knowing that, wow, that place was different. What was up with that place? They weren't normal. And what's with the tables? <laughs> right? People walked in yesterday and didn't even know it was a church. They, they thought it was like some photography place or some bookstore. They, they, they couldn't forget the gigantic cross right here. They just did not, because again, and the picture of Jesus. And the picture of Jesus. But the fact is, they just, they've never seen anything like this. So we have to be compassionate to them. To us, it's normal. Why? Because of our experience, because of our wisdom. We've learned that we can serve God in any capacity. We don't have to serve God in a box because he's not in a box. He created the box. We might be in a box. But he's not. Go back one chapter to Hebrews 12. Why can't we tell these flies or not? That's your price. That's the price you pay for keeping the doors open all the time on Saturday. <laughs> Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, if you remember when we went to 1 Timothy and I shared with you how we are a spectacle to the angels. We're a spectacle to the angels because, one, they don't have the filling of the Holy Spirit. They don't have the completed canon of Scripture like we do. So they learn from us. And we're surrounded by witnesses. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. Again, compassion towards those who don't have the truth yet or who don't know what it is to be set free. And the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I know it's not easy going to a church that focuses only on the word solely. 
But based upon this morning's worship, you would have thought we were a contemporary Christian church. You see how he creates a little bit of balance there? But to run with endurance this race takes patience and time, and even through your greatest sufferings, you endure knowing that in the end, you're going to get to the finish line, and he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's the hope that we have. Fix our, fixing our eyes on worship? No. Fixing our eyes on who? Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself. Why? So that you may not grow weary and lose heart. I know sometimes it's not popular to go to church on Sunday night. Or sometimes you're so tired on Sunday morning that you don't have the energy. But you know when you come in here and the love of Christ overwhelms you from this church. And the blessings that those that have been called to give love on you. You're okay. You know those times you don't come and you sit at home? And you wish you were here. No. Wishing that the streaming was working so that you could still watch it. It works. If you're home and you want to watch it, call me on my cell phone and say, Pastor, I'm home. I'm not feeling too good. Would you call me on Skype so I can watch? It's available. It's right there. Go to Hebrews 11. One through three. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. For by it, by what? What's it? it right. By faith. The men of old gained approval. By <laughs> faith we understand wisdom. By faith we understand that the world's were prepared by the Word of God. It was by the Word He created it. The Word. So that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Go to 1 Timothy, please. Chapter 2. First of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers and petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of just the men who wear white after Labor Day. No. To all men. Not just believers. All men. Now we know that words within the Bible have more than one meaning. Men here is not referring to the masculine. But he created them. For kings and all who were in authority, <clears throat> and all who were in authority, and all who were in authority. <laughs> I'm right for it. That's like God taking out. In order <laughs> that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. One more time. Very, very important. Very important. Then I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men. Why? Why are we commanded?
to pray and send petitions for all men. Have you by any chance noticed on our prayer list that we pray for not everyone in the world, but we pray for those in our government. We pray for those that are other churches. We pray for those that are within our circle. If anybody needs a prayer request, we put them on there. He commands us to do that. That's why Acts 2.42 says we are, we don't have to go there. That's our, 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 our passage. But that we continuously devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. <clears throat> to the breaking of bread, to fellowship, and to prayer. That's what it's all about. But we do that for all men. All people. For kings and all who are in authority in order that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life. Do you think quiet has anything to do with volume? Because certainly I would have a hard time with that. It means not a busy life. Causing trouble, causing strife. Turn me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For God has not called us for the purpose of impurity, but in what? Sanctification. You remember what that was from this morning? To be set apart. To be different. For us? No, for God. We've been set apart unto God. For a purpose. For a reason. <laughs> Consequently, he who rejects this is not rejecting man, but the God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now as to the love of brethren, you have no need for anyone to write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. For indeed you do practice it toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, to excel still more and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life and to attend to your own business and work with your hands just as we have commanded you. This is one of my favorite passages. Any passage that gives me the opportunity to tell you to mind your own business gets me fired up. Because while we want to worry about everyone else's problems and we want to try and solve anyone else's problems and basically being someone who enables other people, we all enable somebody at some point at some time, especially our children. We do it out of love. But as an example, we know that God, he doesn't enable us. He doesn't enable us. He's not an enabler. He guides us. And what we choose to do is up to us. That's why he says here very, very clearly, to make it your ambition. What is an ambition? I do not know. A goal. Make it a goal in life. To do what? To lead a quiet life. Don't go around being a busybody. Don't go around getting in everybody's business. What does the next passage say? Uh. And attend to your own business and work with your hands just as we commanded you. What that means is each one of us is given a gift. Some have multiple gifts. But our job is to function within those gifts. Not to try and tell people how to live their lives. The only one who's allowed to do that was Jesus. He was the only one who's allowed to say that. But many take the scripture and they up. See, it says, rebuke your brother and correct him. In love. They forget that part.
but we have to lead a quiet life and attend to our own business and work with our hands just as he has commanded us to do. Go to verse uh, chapter 5. Verse 5. Chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12. But we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charge over you in the Lord and give you instruction that you esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. Can you imagine what this world would be like if just half of the world would live in peace with one another? I guess that would, we wouldn't have a job, would we? Think about it. And we urge you, brethren, admonish the unruly. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with all men. See that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all men. Rejoice always. I know when things are off, it's not easy to rejoice. I know. I know it's easy to praise them when things are good. But we have got to find within ourselves the ability to continue to praise them when things don't go good. It's not easy. But all he wants to do is know, can you? Can you praise me when things are bad? It's easy when you're married to be a hero one day and a zero the next. So you really don't even have to do anything. Just existing sometimes gets you in trouble. But it's at those times that you need to be strong. Again, I know this is not in Proverbs. We'll be going there, I promise. We'll finish Proverbs 11 tonight. But all of these are relating to all the things that we've been experiencing over the last four weeks. We've been tested. Are we still going to praise Him if there's one? Or are we going to question, did we do the right thing? I'll be the first one to tell you. But I know people, and I know this is not favorable, People rather finish watching the game, having their beer and having a good time or whatever. That's their choice. That's their right. But we understand that Christ is coming back and that we have got to be prepared for them. See, you've chosen to answer the phone when he called. You didn't have to. You could have let it go to voicemail. But you answered the phone and said, yes, Lord. And he said, I'm here. Let's go. Hold on, buckle up, and get ready for a ride. And there's ups and there's downs. And there's ups and there's downs. We're on the way up. And then it'll level off. And we'll go down a little bit. And then we'll go up. But the fact is, if we are paying attention now in the present, in the present, it's a gift. And we're focusing on the good, and the bad, and we learn from our experiences, we won't have to go back. We just go forward. I watch people let the things of this world bring them back. It's like a dog returning to its vomit. I watch, I see it, breaks my heart. 